for that. So feet hip width apart, toes straight ahead, sitting bones down and shoulders relaxing down and back and get into your mountain pose. Hips nice and open and just allow those ribs in and up for core support. Shoulders relaxed and crown reaching high. And then inhale, bring your arms to shoulder level, stretch away out, keep the shoulders down. Exhale, hands to your chest, elbows back. Stretch out to the front, keeping your shoulders down still. And hands behind, clasping your fingertips. Lift your heart, stretch. So feel that shoulder expansion across the chest. And then pivot over as you exhale and come into the forward bend. So the more you bring your hands up toward the ceiling, over toward your head, the more those shoulders will start getting a little bit more work and relief. Tuck in your chin, kind of move your head back and forth for the neck area. And then when you're ready to come up, lift your ribs, sitting bones down, keep the chin in all the way up. Open toward the ceiling. Shoulders down, head stretching back, and just upper body back bend. And then inhale upright, exhale and release your arms back to mountain pose. Just take a moment feeling that circulation. Bring your awareness inward. Remember, yoga perspective. And again, inhaling, reach to the side. Exhale, hands to your heart. Stretch out to the front, shoulders down. And exhale behind you to clasp the opposite way. And then again, lift your heart, stretch your spine, and pivot at your hips coming over into your forward bend. So just a gentle stretch. Always a little bit of release is a good thing to do in the morning or at lunchtime if you happen to be there. And then inhaling, work your way up, chest high, shoulders down, head stretching back, and again, upper body back bend. Lengthen your spine, spread your toes, and breathe. And then inhaling, come up. Exhale and release. Just feel a little more circulation there across the shoulders. Remember, we're a forward bending society, so we want to do a lot of chest expansion as we work that upper body today. Inhale, arms to shoulder level, palms toward the ceiling and over your shoulders. Pass and clasp your hands for our warm up. Sitting bones down and lean, getting those ribs stretching away from. Push that foot down, maximize the lengthening, and then switch your hands, shoulders back down, and exhale to the other side. Make sure you're not leaning your shoulder forward, just reaching out through the spine. And then again, inhale and exhale back to mountain. Feel your sides and your spine a little bit more energized. And we'll do our twist. So again, arms at shoulder level, then palms up and over your shoulders. Elbows clasped, pull the arms back by your ears. Sitting bones down, stretch your spine apart. Remember, the more you stretch sitting bones down and crown high, the more you have room to twist. Keep your knees a little bent, keep the weight on both feet, and stretch up on the breath in, pivot over as you exhale. And come into your twist for Inhale your way up, lift your heart, stretch your elbows back, keep breathing. And relax your shoulders. And then inhale upright, exhale back to the center, switch your arms around again, and arms by your ears, sitting bones down, stretch and twist. And again, weight on both feet as you stretch. Exhale over. So come into your forward bend on this side. Kind of notice if that feels different through your body. See if you can. Or 
work your way back up and into that upper body for your back bend, being really gentle on that low back while it's twisted. Elbows way back, kind of look up and lift your heart. And then into the upright, exhale back to the center, bring your arms up. Now let's keep them by the shoulders and pivot. So arms by the ears, shoulders by your head and sitting bones back. So get your back as parallel to the floor as you can, stretch way out and then drop into ragdoll. Just take a moment there and then slide your hands up under your knees, straighten your back and lengthen. You can kind of pull the chin a little bit forward, but not too much because you want the back of your neck to keep stretching. And then exhale back down and roll your way all the way to standing. And as we get back into mountain pose, just take a moment, feel your body, especially through that chest area and allow yourself to breathe. If you've got a wall near you, go to the wall. We're gonna put our hands on the wall. So if you don't have a wall, and anybody got I have a wall, everybody's got a wall, okay. Use your wall. We're gonna put the hands right in front of your shoulders and then bring them up a little bit higher. So the hands are kind of at the top of your head. And then take a step back so that your arms can straighten and drop through your chin and your chest, letting that upper body get a little bit of expansion through the heart. So you wanna keep pushing the sitting bones back, get your legs as much as possible right above your ankles, your hips right above your ankles, and the sitting bones pushing toward the middle of the room or whatever's behind you. So you're Arms stay next to your ears, your shoulders kind of next to your ears with the hands above your head. And don't tuck your chin in, but pull your chin out and forward so that the top of your head crown goes toward your hands. And just keep sinking through that upper chest, armpit, shoulder area, letting yourself get a good upper body back bend, opening through the heart. And then tuck your chin in, <clears throat> bend your knees, walk toward the wall, and release your arms. <coughs> Sorry. Okay, put one hand on the wall right in front of your shoulder. Straight arm. Turn your fingertips back to the side 90 degrees. So if you've got your right hand on the wall, your fingertips turn to the right. If it's the left hand, it goes to the left. And then walk into the wall till your forearm is on the wall and turn away from your arm toward the center of the room. It's going to open your shoulder, so don't go too far if that's any discomfort coming in. But you want to just keep kind of pedaling around as things relax, letting that whole shoulder area get a little bit more open. So keep breathing. Keep as much as you can, pressing that hand into the wall, the arm into the wall, and moving around so that you're facing away from the wall as much as you can. And then turn all the way back toward the wall. Bring your fingertips up and release your hand to your side. It may feel like that arm is now longer than the other one and a little bit more released through the shoulder. So we want to do the same thing on the other side and balance. So again, hand in front of your shoulder, turn the fingertips to the side 90 degrees, walk all the way in and get that forearm on the wall as much as you can with the hand still on the wall. And then again, turn toward the center of the room. So as you start, stop there, feeling the stretch through the shoulder, just breathe and relax. Exhale, tension, maybe turn a little bit more if that works, but don't go too far. You don't want to overdo anything because if you stretch things too much, you can damage and strain your whole shoulder area, which we don't want to do. And then after you've stretched as much as you want, exhale, turning back to the wall, fingertips up, and release the hand to your side. And come back to your mat. 
So take a moment as you get there, feeling that chest a little bit more expanded, those shoulders may be a little bit more open. And then hands to your heart. Mountain pose with the rest of your body, don't forget, and inhale, hands towards the ceiling. Keep looking at your thumbs as they get up and bring them behind you. Again, the chest lifts, shoulder blades drop towards your waist, hips stay over your ankles, and just keep looking towards your thumbs. So you're only going as deep into that back bend as you'd like. And then exhale, hands to your heart, and release. And again, just feel the circulation through the chest, through the upper body. And then we're going to put the hands on the back of your body with the heel of your palm near your shoulder blades, fingertips down towards your waist. And then rotate your elbows toward each other as much as you can as you press your hands into that shoulder blade and lower back area. And then inhale and look up towards the ceiling. Keep your hips over your ankles and keep rotating the elbows closer toward each other, getting a nice good chest expansion through that upper body and a little bit of a back bend through the whole spine. Keep breathing. Lengthen your spine out through the top of your head. And then as you exhale, tip your chin toward your chest. Stand back upright and release your arms. Take a moment, feel where the circulation is, noticing usually you can feel more circulation where the main point of your contraction was. So think about seeing if you can manage to get that feeling in the shoulder blade, upper chest, upper back area. So take a moment there and breathe. Let's see, we'll inhale, arms to shoulder level, palms toward the ceiling, overhead, and then swan dive. So hands, palms toward the floor, pivots forward, get your chest and chin coming forward, and then exhale, ragdoll. Take a moment to breathe, and then hands behind your legs, pull in a little deeper if you want to, or just stay in ragdoll. And then bring your hands back out, Straighten your knees, flatten your back, bring your hands out straight out from your shoulders, so not behind toward your hips and not up toward your head, but straight out so that that shoulder area is nice and aligned and come up pivoting to standing. So you should be in a T position. And then turn your palms up, keep the arms at T position and big circles with your arms reaching out through your fingertips and up through your head, down shoulder blades, down sitting bones. So everything is aligned in mountain pose, stretching open, and we're working the shoulders into that rotation. And then slowly make smaller circles. And then stretch your fingertips out and rotate your palms toward the floor. Keep stretching out, head up, and circles the opposite direction. So just big circles to start with. You want to keep stretching the hands way out and the head way up. And then bring the circle smaller. And then stop. Keep the arms at shoulder level, still sitting in bones and shoulder blades down. Ribs in. Push to one side. Keep your hips right over your ankles so you're getting that lateral stretch. And then back to the center and the other direction. And back to the center, stretch it way, way, way out, and release. When I taught back at TSU, they hated that one. That was the least favorite thing that I did with them. I can't imagine why. <laughs> so feel all the circulation through your shoulders. Feel your arms a little bit more energized, perhaps we should call it. And then inhale overhead. Swan dive forward and come all the way to the mat into child's pose. So hips back on your heels, hands next to your feet, palms up, and forehead down toward the floor. So as you're here, remember knees together, stretching your lower back if you like that, or apart if you want to breathe more easily. 
Let your shoulders roll a little forward here. Just feel how that feels across that upper back area. And then inhale, sitting up and come into just a cross leg position, whatever's comfortable for you. So sitting bones connect, spine aligns. And remember, we're creatures of habit, so that front leg or top leg is always the same. So switch it around. And again, realign into the sitting bones evenly. So if you feel uncomfortable on the floor, you can always fold up your pad behind you to get a little bit of height at the back so you're toward the front of your sitting bones, which makes it a little bit easier through the pelvis and hips to be seated on the floor. Shoulders relaxing, and just allow your whole spine to align. So we're gonna work the neck a little bit and the shoulder area. So bring your chin into the base of your throat. Right there, that jugular notch right at the center of your, front of your chest. And let the back of your neck stretch. And just gently, just keep your shoulders down. Exhale, deepen into that a little bit more maybe. And then bring one hand up to the back of your head. Don't push, just the weight of your hand. And then the same thing with the other hand. So both hands are on your head at the back. And that helps to stretch that back of your neck just a little bit more. But if you push, you can do it too much. So you don't want to really push. You just want extra weight added to your head, giving you that good stretch. Keep breathing. Keep the rest of your body aligned. And exhale and relax as deep as you want to go. And then release your hands down. And tip your chin back up, parallel to the floor-ish. Reach the spine up through the base of the skull, and then we're going to lift the chin towards the ceiling, looking overhead. And then we're going to move the jaw around, so getting some release through that throat neck area. So kind of chewing motions, kind of look Neanderthal with that bottom chin jutting out and pulling it back. Circle it. Move it side to side, kind of allow that whole throat area to get a good stretch. And then coming back to neutral with your jaw, tip your head back upright, lengthening up through the base of your skull. Just take a moment feeling the front and back of your neck. So we need to do that lateral spine motion through the neck. So we're gonna keep the shoulders relaxing down not move either shoulder from its even position and tip your head over toward one side. So the ear comes toward the shoulder, neither shoulder hunches up, and you just allow that opposite side to release and relax. And then the side you're tipping toward, bring that hand up to the side of your head, opposite side of your head. And again, the weight of your hand, not pressure, to give that a little bit more stretch. This tends to be something that, a muscle that really gets compromised easily. So be very gentle and relaxing. And then as it begins releasing and relaxing a little bit more, if you want a little bit more intensity, you can put your hand down to the mat. A little bit pressure on the palm of your hand only if you like a little additional stretch. And again, just breathe and relax, maximizing that stretch for your body, doing only what's right for your neck and shoulder area. And then the hand that's on the floor, bring it back to your lap. The other hand comes down and tip your head back up. Feel how different the two sides feel. And go ahead and switch your legs around so we get a little bit more balance in the lower body while we're doing this. And of course, we've got to balance the upper body too. So find your sitting bones, get everything lengthening up through the base of your skull again, and then tip the opposite ear over, keeping both shoulders down and even. And again, just relax into it on this side as much or as little as it wants to go. Never need to get that ear down to your shoulder. My ex-husband, Mike, used to pretend that he could do that by hunching his shoulders up. Doesn't help. So just keep the shoulders down. 
Bring your hand up to the outside of your head again, just the weight, not pressure. Relax it there and give maybe a little bit more stretch through that opposite side. And if that's something that feels right for you, you can bring your hand down and get a, a little bit more maximized, but don't overdo it. And again, breathe and relax. Just let your body release any tension, maximizing and minimizing, depending on what's right for your personal practice. And then if a hand that's down, bring it to your lap. The other one comes down and tip your head back upright. Take a moment there, feeling that sides of your neck. Spine gets a little lateral motion just through the neck on that one, as well as stretching through that side muscle from the skull down through the shoulders. And then we're going to do our twist. So again, shoulders stay facing forward, body stays facing forward. We're going to lengthen through the spine and we're only turning the neck and chin, looking to the side. So the head is moving, the neck is moving, the rest of the spine is staying pretty much where it was. So backing out of the driveway, keep looking behind you a little bit more. You want to keep lengthening up through the spine because remember in the twists, the more you have the spine stretch apart, the deeper it can turn. So as you relax and exhale, go only as far as it's right for you, not too far. And then again, lengthening up, exhale, back to the center. You can switch your legs one more time if you want to so that we can go to the other twist. And again, lengthen up through the spine, sitting bones, shoulder blades, everything down through that lower body and turn your head the other way. Shoulders stay facing the front, hips are even toward the front as well. And again, just look as much to the opposite side as is good for your neck. Keep breathing, exhaling, maybe deepening. Keep lengthening the spine so it's got room to move and relax. And then turning back to the center, just take a moment again, feeling how that neck area is responding this morning. And then let's come up on our knees. So if your surface beneath your mat is very hard, you can fold your mat over so that you and we have another little ant. So that you have a little cushioning under your knees because we're gonna come up onto our knees, ultimately. So sitting bones down toward the heels, so you've got your hips and knees and feet aligned. And then bring your hands behind you, clasp your fingertips, and press the hands down toward the floor as you open your heart looking up toward the ceiling. And then tuck your chin a little bit toward your chest and pivot your forehead down toward the mat as you bring your hands up toward the ceiling and maybe over toward your head a little bit more if you like that. So if you're like a sage, you can get those arms coming way up and over. Or if you're just a normal person, you may not have those hands even up in the air. They may be closer to your back. That's okay. Do what's right for your shoulders. Tuck in your chin just a little bit. Bring your hands as far toward your head as they want to go. And then inhaling, rotate your face forward, crown up toward the ceiling as you sit back up, bringing your hands down toward the floor. And again, expand across the heart and chest as you look up. And then exhale and release your hands back to your lap. So again, sitting bones toward the floor, everything aligned, and crown reaching toward the ceiling. Just feel the circulation through your spine, through the neck area, the shoulder area, noticing your body this morning. And then again, we're going to do the same thing. So clasp your hands the opposite way. So whatever's your habitual clasp, switch it over one finger. And then again, the fingers come toward the floor, the chest goes toward the ceiling, head stretches back and away, chin lifts a little bit, but not too much. Don't crunch the back of your neck too severely. And then again, stretching chest forward and inhaling, exhale, pivot at your hip joints, 
and come forward. Forehead toward the floor, hands toward the ceiling, only as much as is right for you. And again, breathe. So you can have those heels of your palms apart, or you can have a little bit more intensity through the arms and shoulders if you bring your palms together as you're in these positions. So again, deepen the forehead as much toward the floor as it wants to go, and tuck in your chin. And then inhaling, face to the front, crown up, chest expanding, hands coming toward the floor as you sit back up, and again, into that upper body back bend. And then release your hands and come back to your upright kneeling position. So take a moment there, just feeling your body. And then we're going to come all the way up on the knees. So if you haven't folded your mat or put a pad under you, you may want to do that. So separate your knees so they're right under your hip bones. Feet straight back where they can be a little bit toward each other for stability. And then we're going to take the hands again like we did when we were standing and put the hands on that shoulder blade area, heel of the palm there, fingertips down toward your sacrum. And expand across the chest, rotating those elbows toward each other. So as you come into this position, just allow your chest to lift and your head to reach back. This is supported camel. So just allow your body to maximize or minimize however much your chest and shoulders like this morning. And then as you exhale, tip your chin forward. And again, sink your hips back to your heels and come all the way down into child's pose. So breathe and relax. Release and relax all that spine and shoulder, neck area. And then inhaling up, we're going to come to staff position with your feet at the end of the mat. And then using your core for support, we're going to roll all the way down onto the floor. So come all the way down into your corpse position, just a little reclined integration. And then bring your hands to T position straight out from your shoulders. So just allow your whole shoulder area to sink down toward the floor. And then press your low back down, bend your knees, bring your heels in near your hips, feet flat, knees straight up. And then slide your sitting bones a little bit toward your heels. Get your spine connected and lift your knees, lift your feet with your knees over your hips. We're just going to do our regular twist position. So roll the knees to one side, turn your head toward the opposite side. As you come into your twist, the more the knees go to the floor, the more the lower back is in the twist. You can bring your toes to the mat if you need some support, or put something under your knees if you like it. And if you want more in your lower back, you can bring your knees up a little bit toward your elbows, which will give you a little bit more lower back work. The more you keep your shoulders and shoulder blades down, that's your middle back twist. And of course, your head turning toward the arm behind you, upper back twist, neck and shoulders. And then to release, heels toward your hips and roll onto your back. You can bring the feet to the mat if you want to and reposition, or you can keep the feet up if you're ready. And then knees above your hips and roll to the opposite side, turning your head toward that arm behind you. And again, maximize or minimize. Remember, twists are personal practices, and whatever your spine needs or doesn't need is up to you. And you're, of course, doctor if you've got an issue. And then knees toward your elbow if you love extra, or just leave them there, or pad, however you need to for your twist. Shoulders and shoulder blades down. Really get that heart and chest open to the ceiling. And turn your head for that neck and shoulder area, too. Take a breath. Just relax. And with your heels toward your hips, Roll onto your back, feet to the mat, and slide it out for corpse position for our relaxation. 
So if you like to keep your knees a little bent, if your lower back needs a little bit of release, you can do that. Knees a little toward each other or some support under your knees for that or just regular corpse position if that's good for you. Hands, palms up slightly away from your sides. Kind of roll the thighs, get those knees and toes up toward the ceiling. And then just kind of lift your chest and bring your shoulders and shoulder blades down and then really find to the mat, release that shoulder upper body area. The more you have your hands near your hips, palms up, the more those shoulders stay released. So just let them relax. We worked them a bit this morning. Exhale, tension. And just come deep into your body, letting anything that's still tight and tense, especially in that upper body, release. So take a breath into that shoulder, throat area. And as you exhale, let it sink. And just close your eyes and focus inward on that breath, scanning through your body, releasing and relaxing any tension or tightness. And as you breathe and relax, let your body grow heavy, sinking into that surface beneath you, connecting deep into that earth embrace. As your body relaxes, just release awareness of your body from your thoughts. And as you do, other thoughts will come to you. Remember, it's the job of your mind to keep producing thoughts, but it's your choice whether you pay attention. At this moment, there's no need to remember the past, no need to anticipate the future. Just let your thoughts drift as easily as your breath. And as your body sinks and relaxes and your mind floats and drifts, just let your awareness find the peace within. Deepen into the peace, letting the peace fill your body, fill your mind, fill your being. Just peace. And if you want to remain relaxed a little longer, feel free to do that. Otherwise, drawing energy and awareness back to the moment, to the room, to your body. Just begin moving gently, allowing those shoulders and arms to get a little bit released. And when you're ready, slide those sitting bones toward your heels and back to the floor as you bend your knees and draw them up toward your heart. Give yourself that good appreciative yoga hug and let your body know you appreciate its work today in yoga and every day. And when you're ready to release, you can roll to the side and sit back up and get ready for whatever your day holds ahead for you. Thanks for joining me this morning. Hope you're